Um, hi, welcome everyone. Thanks for tuning in and watching. Um, Michael Bagram um, and myself, Dermot Gracebrook, are just going to uh, revise the presentation Michael did at the recent Status Staffing HR and Ops and Z Forum for the financial services sector, which we held on the 11th of June. And um, what we spoke about at that event was the latest on the TES uh, regulations, an update on that and what's happening there, and also on the current CCMA best practice and tips on how to approach that and what to be aware of. Um, and we're very lucky to have Michael here to tell us all about this. And without further ado, I'll ask Michael to start. And every now and then, I may interrupt him with some questions. Um, and we hope you enjoy it. Michael. Thank you. Yes, we had a great seminar uh, with Status Personnel and Dermot, and we discussed the temporary employment services. We discussed the issues that are going to arise with regard to the changes in the Labor Relations Act, the Basic Conditions of Employment Act. We're expecting our parliament, the South African parliament, to change our labor law uh, within months. We suspect it will happen in the first quarter of 2014. If I could just um, ask you uh, perhaps a macroeconomic question, because you touched on what's good mm -hmm. for South Africa. Um, globally, um, temp or let's call it flexi staffing is increasing, and a great deal of employment has been created. Um, in emerging economies through flexi stuff. And so it, it's had a, a positive effect in that there has been more employment and more people lifted out of poverty. Um, given the, uh, the appeal that flexi staffing has to multinationals who land in a new uh, country and, and invest in that country and, and therefore create jobs, and that's something South Africa through the DTI and the government to recognize they want to do to grow the employment in this country is foreign direct investment. Do you feel that there's reason for foreign direct investment to be concerned about more rigid labor law, or do you think this will also work for them? Yeah, I mean, you've hit on a, on a very interesting topic. Um, we need to look at, at two things. First of all, the temporary employment services in South Africa today employ anything up to 2 million people per month. In other words, if you look at the figures, it's up to about 2 million people who are doing atypical, it's called atypical employment. Um, we, from the 50s and 60s and 70s, we used to always look at Japan and they had a 9 to 5 job and they worked from the, from the age of 17 to the age of 70. That doesn't exist in the world today at all. Um, we only have to look at what's happened in this latest economic downturn from 2008, which has lasted right through to now. It doesn't exist anymore. People are holding atypical jobs all around the world. And the foreign nationals are all looking at the South African situation, and they're saying, can we make this work for us? I have clients uh, of my own that are asking the questions and are asking, can we still conduct ourselves in the same manner in which we used to uh, previously when the laws changed? And the answer is a resounding yes, uh, we can. Um, Namibia, three years ago, tried to ban labor broking. They did. Um, it got banned. It was taken to the Constitutional Court in Namibia and it was overthrown. In the process, Namibia lost half a million jobs. They weren't taken on as permanent. They lost half a million jobs. The government panicked and they've reversed the entire situation. What we need to look at is what's happening in Europe because they're starting to turn the corner. Angela Merkel has done a wonderful thing. She's the new Iron Lady of Europe. What she's done is she's brought in a typical employment and she's created that as the typical employment. In other words, it's become the greater amount of jobs are done through the TESs, the labor brokers, and the employment services. People are holding down two or three jobs each. They're working three hours here, two hours there, and maybe one hour there. Uh, people are working from home. People are using computer technology and working um, in all sorts of environments. So the world is a changed spot uh, from when many of us remember in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. It's completely changed. And I think South Africa has to grapple with that problem. 
Uh, we've just had the latest uh, quarterly review that's been produced by our government, and even the statistician general has said that we need to look at something different. Uh, we need to look at the unemployment. We've just had the um, director of the Reserve Bank um, coming forward, and she's saying that we need to have a look at productivity. We need to have a look at how we employ people. So I think this is growing. It's a growing area of atypical employment, and it's up to the business community to say, how are we going to grow it? How, what are we going to do? Government doesn't, it doesn't create jobs. They are there purely to create the environment so that the business community can create the job. And we found as a business community that we have to emulate the rest of the world. And the rest of the world are moving that way. I've just recently been to New York, and I haven't met one individual on my tours in New York where people are doing typical employment, the 9 to 5 job. No one does a 9 to 5 job. People are working around the clock. Some people have a job that they work from 4 in the morning till 10 in the morning. Um, so it depends on what you're doing and how you're going to keep the economy running. So yes, Dermot, you're right. Um, atypical employment is the way to go. And yes, we've got to rely on the experts, such as the employment agencies, who can then guide us through this. The employment agencies are going hand in hand with the labor consultants, with the labor lawyers, and they're making sure that they get this right and they can guide you into the future. So um, just in terms of thinking about what you're saying and some of the trends that we're seeing um, in South Africa globally, um, I think South Africa is looking to grow employment. It's also trying to move into the knowledge economy. And I think aligned to what you're saying, the knowledge economy is not one that um, perhaps suits the sort of permanent traditional uh, uh, employment model. So there's a tension there of perhaps what South Africa is wanting to do and what it's actually doing. The other tension is if we're trying to grow foreign direct investment, um, perhaps some of these employment policies, while navigatable, are not perhaps fully aligned to it. And then the third aspect, I suppose, and this is where the unions are coming from perhaps, is that atypical employment doesn't tend towards people signing up uh, to unions. And, and that's globally, um, that's been a trend. So the government, obviously, with pressure from the unions, have that interest, but they're fighting the current. They're kind of canute. Yeah. So ultimately, do you think, where is in in a in a long term vision, where do you think South Africa is going to align with the rest of the world, and this is a battle the unions can't win? Or? Yeah. In fact, the unions are already dropping in their numbers. Um, we've obviously seen on the mines what's taking place. That uh, the traditional unions are being challenged. Uh, by new unions, the numbers are dropping quite radically, not only because of retrenchment and not only because of the fallout of the employment numbers, but people are saying the unions aren't delivering what I need. You take the typical entrance into the new market, the person coming out, they're young, they're 24 years old, got a computer science degree, that person doesn't want to wear a suit and a tie, they want to wear sandals and a t-shirt, they want to have their laptop, they want to deliver they want to get paid on productivity, and they want to be recognized for what they can do. That's not typical employment by any stretch of the imagination. That person has got the fingertips of the future. They're going to say, I want what I want. I want to earn decent money. I don't want to get caught in the uh, rush hour from 9 to 5. I don't want to get, get caught in the rush hour in the early morning, and I certainly don't want to leave work at 5 o'clock. If I'm needed at work at 11 o'clock at night, I'll be there. So those are the people that the agencies, the employment agencies, will start chasing in the future. Yes, there are still the typical jobs. A builder still has to be at the building site and still has to know what bricklaying is and has got to be there at certain times and has to fit in. But I think what we're seeing now is that what I saw, for instance, in Taiwan, where building sites are under floodlights at 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, uh, employing people. There's a night shift to come in. The bricklayers come in at 12 o'clock at night and start laying bricks. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable what's going on in this world. And with these figures of the enormous unemployment that we have in South Africa, it can't be business as usual. It won't be business as usual. 
Uh, Mrs. Marcus of our Reserve Bank has said just that. Uh, only two days ago, she addressed the law conference and said, it won't be business as usual. We need to think laterally. And how are we going to do it? How we, where are we going to move to? So Africa can't go beyond the wayside. And I, and I, I strongly believe that um, the South African economists, the South African business community, are not going to sit back and let this become a wasteland. They're not going to allow the trade unions to wag the dog. It's the tail wagging the dog. What's really swaying this is, in fact, the employment market. The employment market needs to change. No one who has the ability to work and can't find a job is going to sit back and say they're happy. They're going to say either we're going to turn to the low road, and quote Ken, Ken Santa, and they're going to turn to what happened in the um, North Africa in the Arab Spring, and they're going to come out to the streets and shout the odds, or they're going to buck the system and it's going to be each person for themselves, and they're going to say we're not going to be a union member, we want a job, and we want to do it as per the atypical employment. It's up to the business community, it's up to the people in, who have the knowledge of the labor law to say, how can we make this labor law, how can we twist it to fit in with what is needed? And I think we're going to get there. Um, in Europe, Angela Merkel's done it. She's done an amazing job, absolutely amazing. She said there is no person in Germany today, 18 years old, that can say they've got nothing to do. If they can't find a job, she'll put them in some sort of training. If they can't find some sort of training, she'll put them in a tertiary educational institution or even in an apprenticeship. But there's no one in Germany today that can say, unless they're lazy or drug addicts or something else, they can say that. When you go around Europe, and I challenge anyone to go off to Spain, for instance, where there is high unemployment, all the youth are learning German. Why do you think they're learning German? And the reason is because they know that if they've got the German language, they'll be able to find some sort of employment somewhere along the line. So we, we're moving. And as a business community, we're not prepared to put up with a little bit of negativity in legislation. Yes, the international market are looking at South Africa, and they're saying, in terms of hiring and firing, you're number 144 out of 145. You almost hit rock bottom. It's bad. What's going on over there? And we're sending out the message from the labor law community saying, don't worry about it. It looks bad. We'll make it work. So I, I don't think that the negativity shouldn't rule supreme. Well, I'm sure um, all those people working for industry bodies trying to get foreign direct investments to come here will be happy to hear that. Um, and one of the pleasures of um, uh, Michael is that he very rarely sits on the fence, as you all now know. Well, thank you very much, Michael, for your time. Um, we will um, make Michael's uh, contact details and, and his website page available on this, and I'm sure Michael will be happy to speak to you if you have any queries around labor law or some of the other issues we spoke about today.